Right behind me, I have two BenQ 32 inch 4K Pro line of displays with me. So starting out with this one, this is the SW series. This one happens to be the SW320, which is one that I'm familiar with. And the whole entire SW line, I am really familiar with that because I've been the launch ambassador for all the SW series of display. This one right here is what BenQ called the design view, the PD. This one right here is their latest PD3220U. And again, like I said, both of these displays are 4K 32 inch displays. Now for this video, what we're gonna do is do a deep dive and a review on the PD3220U. We're gonna talk about every single aspect of it from the connectivity to the color space to the companion software called Display Pilot. But before we start, we're going to do a comparison between the SW line and the PD line and kind of give you some advice in terms of which one you should choose. I'm Mart Suwon Sang, BenQ Brand Ambassador, and let's get started. First, let's start with a comparison between these two lines of display. So first off, let's start with the SW. The SW line of display is what BenQ called a photo view. This is really designed more for photographers, videographers. And the one key thing about the SW line is the hardware calibration capability. In this case, if you're using BenQ proprietary software, Palette Master Element, there's a computer and a chip that's built into the display that has a lookup table. With Palette Master Element, that software is going to talk to the display and it will do all the color adjustment at the panel level. This way you're guaranteed really accurate colors with no video card output manipulation. The advantage of this too is that if you're running multiple displays, using a hardware calibration display will guarantee that all those displays are truly showing accurate colors because all the adjustments are actually done at the panel level. Now moving over to the PD line. This is what BenQ called their design view. This is the 3220U, which is the latest in the PD line. And with the PD line, you will be doing a software calibration on this display, meaning that if you're using an X-Rite device, you'll be using X-Rite i1 profiler software, or if you're using a Spider device, you'll be using the Spider software to do a software calibration on the display. The thing with software calibration is that the ICC profile that those programs create will manipulate the output from the video card in order for your colors to look correctly in the screen. In this case, you're gonna get a little bit more tonal compression, but by all means, it doesn't mean that you're gonna get any less of a color on this display than the SW line. The inner differences between these two lines is the color space that it can show. With all of the SW line, one of the things that we have come to expect from it is 99% Adobe RGB, 100% sRGB, and a variation of between 95 to 97% DCI-P3 or Display-P3 in this case. With the PD line, it depends on which PD you're looking at. For instance, this one right here, the 3220U, can display 97% display P3 and 100% sRGB. Now, what this means is that it can't really go up as high in the color spectrum of Adobe RGB. There is, however, a PD display that can do 99% Adobe RGB, but again, when it comes to the PD line, you have to pick and choose your panel a little bit more. For photographers and videographers with a high demand for color accuracy and consistent color accuracy, the SW line is gonna be the better display for you. If you are an animator designers or if you do CAD CAM work where you need a lot of flexibility and the color accuracy is not on top of your priority list where the convenience of use and a larger display is actually more productive for your workflow, the PD line is gonna be designed more for your needs. The other differences between these two display and these two lines is the design. So the SW line, like I said, is really designed for professionals. In this case, one of the things we're gonna note is that everything is gray with the SW line, meaning that there's no color reflection at all whatsoever. The display kind of blends into the background and then what you're really seeing is just your photos. This is really great for print work or doing color grading when you're editing a video. The other thing too is that it will come with a shading hood standard out of the box. The PD line, however, is a little bit different. The design, it's much more modern and, in a way, and it's a lot more flashy, meaning that it's a really great industrial design, something that I really like and I enjoy. Secretly, I wish that they actually have implemented some of the PD design in the SW line, but understanding the different uses and the different creative users and the environment they need to be in, this is appropriate for the PD line right here. So you have the sleek design, you have an all-around edge-to-edge display, 
but it doesn't come with a shading hood. So that's something to kind of think about. Now the other thing too in my testing that I found out is that with the SW line, what you see is right there at the pixel level. Uh, something that's a little bit different, at least with the PD3220U, is that if you look really closely at the edge of the display, there's a little air gap in between the LCD panel and the front cover of the display. So that's just something to note there. It doesn't really change how you view color or the way how the picture is perceived, but it is something noticeable that you're going to notice that the pixels actually fall back a little bit further than the SW line. So that's just something to think about as well. The other difference between these two lines is the connectivity. The SFU line are starting to come out with USB Type-C, however, the PD line actually comes with not just only USB Type-C, but Thunderbolt 3. So that means this one cable can do so many things. This one Thunderbolt 3 cable right now is carrying my display signal, is charging my laptop, and is also carrying all the I.O. signals to USB port on the display. In addition, this display also has two speakers built in. There are two watts, and it also has a headphone jack on the side both on the side and on the back of the panel. This way you can plug your headphones in if you want to, or if you want to play sound directly from the display, you can do that too. That's something very different than the SW line. So with that in mind, one of the capabilities of the Thunderbolt 3 is the ability to daisy chain. That means that not, this one cable will not just only carry the display signal to this display, but I can also hook up an additional 4K display to it, meaning that on one cable, I can daisy chain up to one additional 4K display, which is something that I'm doing now. So this display right here is taking the 4K signal directly from this display. This way, I free up the ports on my computer. That's something that's really amazing about the PD line, and that's something that's very different about the PD and the SW. Now, the other thing to note too about this connectivity is that with all the USB ports built into this display, this display can also work as a KVM switch. That means you can use one set of mouse and keyboard provided that you hardwire it to the USB port on this display. You, when you switch the input source to another computer, those mouse and keyboard can also switch to the other computer too. This way, if you're working with multiple workstations and you need just one display there, this is going to be a really great display for creative and designers who are working in that environment. Now that we have discussed the differences between the SW and the PD line of displays, let's talk about their similarities. Great color being number one. With BenQ Pro line displays, that's something that you can expect right now is you're always gonna get great accurate colors out of the display. The other thing too is that both of these display, both of these lines will come with its own individual calibration report. The SW line calibration report will be a lot more granular, meaning that it will show a lot more information in terms of uniformity, in terms of color trending, color tracking, and so forth, where the PD line is gonna focus more on color accuracy and just how it's being cal calibrated from the factory in general. And lastly, one thing that we can expect from BenQ Pro line of display is the hockey puck, a convenient feature built into the display so that you can quickly switch and change between different color modes. So now that we have discussed the similarities and differences between these two, let's just really focus on the PD line now and do a review on this one. So I've changed the setup for this one so that we can just focus strictly on the PD3220U. Let's talk about the panel first and the size of it. It is a 31.5 inch panel, although we tend to round it up to 32 because it's easier to say. It's a 4K panel, UHD resolution, 3840 by 2160. The aspect ratio of this panel is 16 to 9. It is capable of showing 95% P3 color space and 100% sRGB. One more thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that it's also a 10-bit panel. So a couple of things here that we have already discussed about the connectivity and Thunderbolt 3 is that it comes with all the cables inside the box so that when you buy this display, regardless of whatever computer you have, for instance, if you have a MacBook Pro, you have an Apple computer, you can link up to it. You can link up to a PC that doesn't have Thunderbolt 3 too because it all because it comes with all the cables that you need right out of the box. Now, my only comment about the Thunderbolt 3 cable is that it's really short. I wish I shipped with a longer one, but otherwise, it's good. This panel is HDR10 compatible, so when you're viewing a source file or a source video, in this case, that's HDR compatible, the panel will automatically switch into the HDR mode. A couple of other things to note about this panel and, and many of the recently released BenQ2 is that they are CalMAN certified and Pantone validated. So if you're doing color grading for video, CalMAN certified will make sure that you get really great colors on that 
regard. And if you're actually doing any design or any print work, Pantone Validate also guarantees you're going to get gray color in that area of creative professional work as well. Now, the other thing too that I want to mention is that this display come pre-calibrated from the factory with all the color modes that we come to expect. sRGB, Adobe RGB, Display P3, DCI P3, and many other color spaces such as Rec 709. But there are a few new color spaces that this display shipped with that I want to mention. One of them is MBook, the other one is CAD Cam, Dark Room Mode, Animation Mode, and also a Dual View Color Mode, which allows you to split the screen in half and view two different color spaces side by side. So let's talk about the MBook a little bit more. The MBook is designed specifically and tweaked so that it will match Apple calibration. This means any Apple device with a built-in display, any either laptop or desktop line such as an iMac, if you don't calibrate those and you plug in this display, you set to M mode, when you're viewing them side by side, the color will match it perfectly. Now, something to note is that if you are doing printing, if you're doing color critical work, I always recommend that you go in and calibrate your display. This way you're actually able to see good, true, accurate colors. The other new mode here that they introduced with this display, like I said, is the CAD CAM mode. CAD CAM mode goes in and enhance the line and shape so that you can see polygonals or wireframes much clearer than you would otherwise. There's also a mode for dark room. In this case, if you're working in a fairly dark environment, the dark room mode will dim everything down, providing you greater details to your photo so you can see better in a lower light environment. And lastly, an animation mode, which is designed specifically for animators. What it can do is that it will lighten up displays and there's 10 different shades of lightness that you can do in that case. So what that will do is, when you lighten the display, you can then see better details in the shadow when you're doing animation. So a lot of different color modes for a lot of different group of creative professionals, which I find really great. Now the dual view mode, the one highlight of that is that you can do, for instance, CAD CAM mode on one side and sRGB mode on the other side. That specific use is really more for 3D, for example, 3D artists. For example, when you're working on a wireframe, you can use CAD CAM mode so you can see 3D wireframe really clearly. And then when you want to see the render of that, you want to see that in sRGB color mode so you can have the displays split so that one side is showing CAD CAM, the other one is showing sRGB. So this BenQ PD line also comes with a software called Display Pilot. And I have a chance to test Display Pilot and it's a really interesting and amazing software with a lot of great capabilities. For instance, if we want to change the color mode on the display, many times what we would do is actually reach for the control on the display or actually use the hockey puck that's, you know, extension to the display control. But with Display Pilot, what I can simply do here is just come in and select another color mode and you'll notice that my screen color will automatically change according to what I choose here. This is a really interesting feature and it's also a very deep integration between the software of the computer and also the software or in this case the display firmware. I find this really great because it just saves a lot of time rather than navigating through the menu you can just actually go in and select different color spaces if you want to kind of go through them. So this is display pilot using the various color modes. But in this case, what I can also do is all those individual color modes, for instance, I can go in and manually change the brightness and darkness of the display. I can change the contrast and sharpness, which is really awesome. And in fact, one of the really neat things about this is that it has ICC syncing. So the moment I change the color mode on the display, in this case, I'll go and pick another color mode, is automatically switching the ICC profile that I use on my display, you know, for the output on the computer too. And again, like I said, the level of synchronicity between this software and the firmware of this PD line, it's really amazing. So beyond that, what you can also do is do dual view right from display pilot. So for instance, I'm going to go toggle on dual view right now, and I can go ahead and select, for example, the different modes here. For example, I'm in CAD CAM mode for both of these, but I can also go into like low blue light and you can see half the screen going different colors right away. Now, if you want to use a dual view mode, one of the things I recommend, especially if you're going to do CAD CAM, is making sure that you're already having the profile of the main display or the color mode, in this case, set to CAD CAM already, then come into dual view here toggle this on, then go into a different color mode like sRGB and so forth. This way you can actually work on it properly. So just something to keep in mind is that when you're using Display Pilot, 
The left side of the screen here will be like the native color space that you set it to or the color mode that you set it to before you go into dual view. But dual view, for example, if you turn off here, you can also go back in and change here. For example, this is DCI-P3, which is a lot darker because I've done some calibration on it. Let's go into dark room mode here, for instance, that. And on dual view, I can go in with, for example, um, Adobe RGB. Let's do that. So you can kind of see how the screen is split in half. I thought this kind of is a neat feature, something you can do here. So let's go ahead and toggle that off. On the last tab here, there's a color mode reset. So you, let's say you've gone in and changed, for instance, um, in the sRGB color mode, you notice that my screen's a lot darker because I've gone in and adjusted the colors. If you want to reset that, you would simply check this checkbox and click on reset and it will reset it for you. In this case, I'm going to keep the calibration here, so I'm not going to go ahead and reset that. Okay, now moving on to the next set of control and display pilot. Right on the left side here, we have a tab called display, which is the second one down. In this case, you can come in and control the input. Right now, I only have my laptop inputting to this display via Thunderbolt 3, but what I can do here is go ahead and dynamically switch the input on the display by just actually coming in and selecting these options. This display also has auto pivot on, and one of the ergonomic things about this display beyond it just being an IPS panel, that means that if you turn it side to side or anybody setting on the side, we'll see really great colors too with a 178 uh, degree angle view on both sides. You can also rotate this display vertical as well and it has auto pivot on. That means that the display has an accelerometer built in so it will detect what orientation is in and once that happens, it will automatically switch the display. So again, another deep firmware integration that they have going on here. Another mode that's really neat about this too is like I mentioned before, it also has picture in picture or picture by picture. So let's go ahead and enable here. So starting with this one first, I can do picture in picture uh, with two different sources if I want to. For instance, right here, the main one is using Thunderbolt 3. I can select the second one, the picture in picture to show Thunderbolt 3 also. This way you see two screens side by side and you can come in and change the color spaces. Or like I showed you before, I can also do picture by picture as I've shown you before. And the nice thing about the picture by picture here is that you can do two different color, two different inputs for this one. Again, same thing with the picture by picture. For example, if I have a PC linked up to this, I can have the PC showing the small screen, this one showing the large screen, so on and so forth. You can come in and change the size of the picture in picture. So again, very similar to what you can do in the SW line, where the SW you have to go through the menus, or in this one, if you didn't have this software installed, you have to go through the menus. This one allows you to literally change it from the OS level, which I find really convenient. One of the things I end up really liking a lot is that you can do picture by picture times four. This is really amazing because what happened is I can have four input sources on this display. So one of them, in this case, what I would have to do is one that would be Thunderbolt 3, the other one would be DisplayPort, the other two would be HDMI 1 and HDMI 2. In this case, if I ever want to like hook up four sources this display, this is really a great mode to come in and select four different type of inputs. This is again the screen gridding that I find really interesting and neat. Again, this is something that it's not truly built into the SW line, but this is more of a feature of the PD line. So now we're going to turn this feature off and we'll go into the tool setting a little bit more. Now the tool setting, there's a couple of things. There is, for instance, desktop partition, application mode, keyboard hotkey, and print assist. So let's start with desktop partition. Desktop partition I find really nice because what happened is you can come in and click all these different presets and you can have the program automatically aligned to there. If you're not using a utility for window alignment or window organization and desktop, this is a great free software that comes with BenQ PD line display that I find really awesome. So for instance, let's go ahead and open two Safari tabs. Let's go ahead and start out with searching. Let's do a BenQ. PD3220U. So we're going to go to BenQ website on this one. And what I'm going to do is start another window. And this one, let's search up the BenQ announce NQ SW 321C. Because let's say we want to compare specs side by side. So now with Display Pilot, what I can simply do here is come click on this and I can drag the window and you're going to notice that there's an overlay that comes up immediately where I drag the window. So I can just drop this window like here and it automatically puts it there. Let's go ahead and drop this window here and it drops it side by side. 
super convenient features. You can also add even more windows. For instance, let's go with three, or you can even do like a four design. But in this case, let's just do three for instance. So let's say I'm gonna start another Safari tab here and let's go into, uh, let's see, let's go into my YouTube channel. <clears throat> All right, so that loads up my YouTube channel. In this case, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and drop this on the bottom. Let's say I want this screen on the top, I just go ahead and drop it there and it automatically organize the window for me. So again, it, it's a really nice feature that you can use. It's not as automatic as some applications that install natively in your system and you can constantly drag to like a hot corner or something like that. But if this is something you use, this is a really nice feature. And like I said, the moment you click here and drag, it shows an outline on the screen. You can drag it and drop in whatever location you like. In this case, let's say I want it there, it just goes there. All right, when you're done with that, go ahead and turn this off this way that when you drag a window around, it doesn't actually pop back up again. So now let's go ahead and talk into application mode a little bit. So in the application mode, if you have this enabled, you can actually set the PD line to switch between different color modes automatically when you launch an application. For example, if I want to use Adobe Illustrator, for instance, in sRGB mode, it will automatically pop in sRGB, but the moment I launch Photoshop up, it will launch in Adobe RGB mode. And when, let's say I come back in Safari here, it's gonna go back to mBook. So let's go ahead and test this out by launching Photoshop. <clears throat> And the moment Photoshop comes up, you're gonna notice that the screen changes the color right away because it's now switching into a different color mode. Let's go ahead and bring the Photoshop into full screen here. Okay, so now that I'm in Photoshop, I can actually load a picture, but I'm not gonna do it in this case. What I'm gonna do though is go ahead and switch to Safari and we notice that our color has changed. Because I have ICC Sync check in the color and color mode sub panel right here, Every time I change between different applications under the tools that I have set here, it's automatically changing not only the color mode on the display, but the corresponding profile on the native operating system on the computer too. And this will work for both Mac and PC. And lastly, we also have this mode here called Print Assist. Now, if you turn on Print Assist, what you can do here is you can go ahead and drag this box around so I can click here. This Print Assist outline kind of the paper size so you can get an idea. So for instance, right now, this print assist is showing an A4 vertical. I can change it to, for instance, to like a B5 horizontal, B5 vertical. So I can change it to different mode. You can also do a grid on the display. This is an overlay grid, which is kind of helpful because this is a one centimeter grid. You can also do one inch grid. You can also do half inch grid, for instance. You can change the color of the grids. So this can always help out with design work or when you want to align something in design. Again, I think this is a really cool feature that you can really use throughout depending on the design work you do. I don't think that the grids here are gonna match or correspond exactly with, you know, like a print output size or something because depending on how much you're zooming into the graphic layout or the design or the photos, but this is something that you can do. You can also change the weight of a line. For instance, let's say that was too thick. You can also go come into thin here and you can go, like I said, white. So you can change a whole bunch of these outline colors depending on what you need and your design workflow needs. So Print Assist is another tool that you can come in and use here that I find helpful for designers especially if you want to align something up properly. Beside using the guides in the program, sometimes that gets in the way. You can just turn on this display software overlay and it will help a lot too. So that has been the review of the Display Pilot, the companion software that ships with a PD line of display. I really like the level of integration that this software could do in terms of changing the display mode, changing the color mode in the display. It makes it much easier than going through the menus because many times the menus, there are two or three sub menus level deep and you have to go in and dig for them. This one, you have it on your computer, you can just change it right away. It makes it super easy, super convenient. A few more things before I wrap up the review of the BenQ PD3220U is that the controls for the display beyond just the hockey puck, the individual controls are not built on the bottom display or not on the side or in the front or anything like that. They're actually on the back of the display on the right side of it. So what you would do is reach back and you can turn on and off the display. And there's also buttons there, including a joystick that will allow you to more intuitively navigate the built-in 
menu of the PD display. In addition to that, they also have two hotkeys that are user programmable by default from the factory. One of them will change to input, the other one will change into different color modes and you can pick up to three different color modes here or input, but you can always go in and reprogram that to what you need. That's why we call them hotkeys so you can change them however you need them. One last thing that I found out about this display too, in testing it really closely with the SW line display, I mentioned earlier that there is a little bit of an air gap between the LCD panel and the front cover of the display. The other thing too is that if I turn this display off, one of the things that it's noticeable right away is that the coating of this display, you can see the differentiation between the black edge of the display and the actual open part where you can see the LCD a little bit more. I think this has a lot to do with like the air gap that was built in there. Um, something that you don't notice with the SW line display, when you look at the SW line, you can't tell where the screen ends and where, you know, where the actual LCD pixels start on the SW line with the Infinity Edge. But that's another little notable difference that I want to bring it up. Again, this doesn't really change the overall picture quality or anything of a display. It's just that when you turn it off, you see the coding a little bit more prominently than the SW line. This has been a review of the feature pack BenQ 3220U Designer Display. If you are a designer, animator, if you do CAD CAM work, this is going to be a great display that will fit perfectly into your workflow. Personally, I am a photographer, so what I would do in, in my case is buy the BenQ SW series of display. This way I can utilize the hardware calibration features on the SW series and I would consider the PD line as a secondary or third monitor to my setup. I've also made a companion preview video of this display and I'll leave the link to that video in the description below. If you haven't yet, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload cool videos like this. And until next time, I just write. That means the display are pretty much calibrated to, I, that was, that one I like it better. Okay, one more time. CAD CAM work, animators, Too. This means that you're going to get great color regardless of the <laughs> and the preview videos side by side or not side by side. Dang it! I keep saying that. <laughs> if you haven't yet, please. Urgh, I missed the preview. That's okay. Ah. You're good. Okay, one more time. Do it